the Chief Justice of India and the Constitution Bench was in a very stern mood today, ticking off uh, Harish Salve, who was arguing on behalf of uh, you know, the government and the State Bank of India, explaining why this couldn't be done. Uh, but the Chief Justice came down very hard on the SBI's argument, saying that what you're saying in open court is different from what you've written in the affidavit and that you actually have these details. So why not just make them available? Anjali Bhardwaj is a well-known social activist. She's been fighting this case and arguing for transparency in electoral bonds for a very long time. Sanju Verma is back with us. So I want to go across to Anjali Bhardwaj first. Now, there is mixed opinion on whether the Supreme Court's decision actually will bring about more transparency or not. Because the counter can be that if you make public who donated how much without revealing to whom, a lot of what was earlier being given in black will once again go back to being given in black to these political parties that electoral bonds to some extent brought that black money into white now it will revert back into black and no one is any the wiser or any the better well first of all uh, rahul i think it uh, let's be very clear about one thing the supreme court in its judgment on the 15th of february asked the sbi to give two pieces of information one was purchaser details, who purchased the bonds, of what denomination and on which date. And the other, very clearly, was redeem redeemer's details. Which political party encashed the bonds, uh, which, what denomination they were and what date. So nothing has changed today. The Supreme Court has very firmly stood by its decision, its judgment of February 15. And I think that there is no question that there will be much greater transparency How? once there is compliance with the Supreme Court's judgment. How? For the simple reason that today, I as a citizen, all the citizens in this country have no idea who has been buying electoral bonds. The regulators in this country, the Election Commission, the RBI, nobody knows who is buying electoral bonds? What is going to happen on the 15th of March, once there is compliance with the Supreme Court's judgment, is that we will all know who donated. But you won't know who they donated bonds. to. Take any corporate now, group. Yeah. If they bought 100 so, rupees of bonds, you don't know who they gave them to. Yes. So you are absolutely right that they are not linking. The matching was neither ordered on the 15th of February, nor has the court insisted that it be done today. So what will happen really is that there will be a list of all the donors, including all the companies, because let's remember that 94% in value terms of the electoral bonds have been in the denomination of 1 crore rupees, which is indicative of corporate funding. And that's what the court had also said. So we will now know the list of all those who gave these electoral bonds. And there will be a lot of investigative journalism. There will be people who will be examining these lists. And there will to be a see who got what. At least once we know which corporate group clear. Sanju Verma gave how much money. You can see how they've grown or what benefits they got or which projects they got. And then people can form their own judgment. Therefore, judgment. Therefore, Anjali argues it leads to transparency. Also, you know, Harish Salve cut a very sorry figure in court today. He got a real pasting from the Supreme Court. Because the Supreme Court basically said, what you've said in the affidavit is different from what you're saying in the court. This whole jalebi that you created about matching, as Anjali points out, the Supreme Court never asked for it. They never said match the bond to which party it went to. The Supreme Court never asked for it. So this is like a jalebi of the government and the SBI's own making. You know, Rahul, first and foremost, uh, uh, this is a very unpopular opinion. And I'm taking a bit of a risk, but I will have to say this with no offense to the Supreme Court. This entire electoral bond issue... You know, uh, it caught fire in 2018 because in 2018, the same Supreme Court said that electoral bonds are a great way of funding elections in an electoral democracy like India because you at least know that the money is coming via checks and not via cash, which is what used to happen for the longest time for 50, 60, 70 odd years. So, 70 years ago, you know, election funding used to happen with cash and black money. Let's not kid ourselves about anything uh no, let's, know, when you to come that. to the question i've asked you the government so was never asked simple... to do matching the sbi was never asked to do matching they made that jalebi on their own account and the supreme court just quashed what they were saying and someone like right. harish salve looked really silly and sorry in court today 
there is no jalebi uh, you know uh, and there is no uh, you know indori poha uh, that i'm going to discuss on your show let's not trivialize uh, i just have this to say that if the state bank of india has now been given an ultimatum no less by the apex court i always say irrespective of whether you agree with the supreme court or not if the highest court of the land has asked the uh, sbi the premier public sector bank to furnish details that will be done but i will also add one thing rahul kaval i will not allow the opposition to take the moral high ground ki electoral electoral bonds ki funding ka khulasa hoga so then the bjp will be in deep trouble because let's be very clear as a percentage of total funds only 52% of bjp's funding comes from electoral okay. bonds 